Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9, you know the drill now. Well, I have to, you'll have to excuse me for the bit of the messy desk, but yeah, it's covered with hairs and biscuit crumbs and God knows what. I assume the hairs come from my head, but I can't guarantee it. But anyway, today's teardown is a Virgin Media modem. More specifically, a coaxial cable modem. And then of course it outputs the ethernet to where you put it into a switch or wireless access point and it takes a standard 12 volts in because I have actually powered this up what did I use on the power input I had some random 12 volt adapter that I pulled off something I might have even used the home hub which is about is the home hub 12 or 15 volts I can't remember anyway that's not cracking this thing over what the hell was that oh that's radiator making weird noises it does that from time to time I assume it's just air in the pipes. So we have obviously, everyone knows what that is, it even is labelled. Ethernet, if you don't know what that is, perhaps you might want to do some research into basic networking. Reset, I'm pretty sure you can guess what that does. Very useful button on these types of devices because they do have a habit of going down, especially the wireless varieties. And of course, a coaxial cable socket I'm not exactly sure on the specific name of the cable type that would be used on this but it'd be a form of BNC one of the BNC derivatives essentially now these can either be optical straight to the house which is non-existent as far as I know in the UK but they can also lead back to one of the um, network boxes in the neighbourhood, you can you actually if you go around a neighbourhood, you hear fans near one of those little exterior boxes. That's probably where the broadband is delivered to the neighbourhood. They can have the optical links delivered to them. And in fact, if you're building neighbourhoods now, make sure you install dark fibre because we want fibre optics in our new neighbourhoods. It's bad enough we don't get fucking parking spaces in new builds anymore. But anyway, that's the overview. There's really nothing else round it of note. There's a few bits of your usual gumph at the bottom, you know, 12 volt, 1 amp, made in China, because what isn't these days? And of course, MAC addresses and whatnot. No IP addresses, because they can be dynamically arranged. So, to the tear down. Oh, I can see noise on the CCD. Could it be radiation? Afraid not, Geiger counters prove negative. And so the screws are removed. Meaning, da, 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 da. yes, the ports like to hold it in. But once you're through that, you're into the case where all the light piping, which is up in here, in fact, um, about these set of five LED points, they're not really light pipes actually lead up to here and if you look carefully on the case yes I can see it on the camera you can actually see through them to the various statuses anyway this is not the subject of discussion what is it's the PCB not much except diddly squit on the bottom a whole load of decoupling caps for noise suppression and de suppression on the processor mainly but the real joy of the matter is what's on the top so we have our standard sort of ethernet butter chip I'm not exactly sure exactly what these do because I've never looked into the electronics of ethernet cables yes shocking something about computing I haven't looked into oh yes ah, I better change that shouldn't I now here we have a wind bond chip that looking at it looks like it is a flash rather than a memory although saying that looking at the actually I'm going to retake that because looking at these traces they do these funny like wiggly line traces for noise suppression differential pairs they're called so this will probably be the main working RAM this wind bond chip which is a um, let's just look at the part numbers identify which one it'll be W9725 G5 one think that's B minus three minus three will probably be the speed and then of course we've got some 
generic capacitors here we have a chip hang on let me just get it to where I can see it don't know that particular type of chip and of course we have what is obviously the Ethernet controller essentially that is a ET1011C2 minus C and of course we have plenty of passive stuff power regulation stuff down here essentially what David calls the old jelly bean goodness I have powered this up this is basically a modem with a few basic router functions available such as DHCP and that for hooking up to a switch you really can't do much with it apart from some very basic stuff and of course where a lot of the interesting stuff will lie the shielded cans but because we already know this works and have powered it up well I haven't actually put it on the network because we don't have anything like this at home or at university that I have access to anyway man oh man how I'd like to directly splice off the uni internet and send it back home Ooh, lightning fast with decent upload speed too so bear with me while the we while we part with these cans so after the shielding cans are departed with and opened right here as expected this all runs at RF I don't know the frequencies I haven't googled them and down here we have the control conversion circuitry from the RF so this will be our essentially I think they call it the if stage I'm not exactly sure whether this runs at the same thing but this looks somewhat similar to something like an analog television tuner but this will be your main sort of RF conversion chip but saying that we've got a direct line all the way down to here which goes right into this can but then the can does have several output points ah looking at that we've got various wiring leading to this chip which is this chip that receives the signals and of course we've got the crystal to make sure it's clocked at the right frequency although if you're smart on this stuff you'll make sure it is a Manchester type system which has the clock included correct me if I'm wrong about Manchester code there I we've done a little bit on it here at uni but not a huge amount so I ain't no expert so that means this stage will probably be I don't know what could it be it looks like some form of control for the RF anyway it could be frequency dependent hang on while I google the part number and find out some extra information now you get to experience EEPROM 9's crude screen capture software aka I haven't installed anything on this machine on screen capture wee there's my mouth okay so it's made by Antidix which is actually um, correct so we're on to the right data sheet and it is what is known as a programmable gain amplifier so what does it do because that may mean nothing to you as generally these names do when you first see them well it's high linearity so if you're a bit of a gamer you'll know where li as long as it's that kind of linearity then we know what it is high output power with integrated amplifier and programmable gain control and of course you've got attenuation which is to do with noise which is 0 to 58 dB so a reasonable range there adjustable 2 dB increments via 3 wire serial control we like here a bit of good old RS232 and of course 33 dB gain at maximum attenuation so got a reasonable noise front if I remember what the attenuation is I've probably forgotten <laughs> I do that. The wireless stuff that we do in class is interesting but it's bloody tough. And of course we've got output power levels up to a plus 64 dB MV. I'm not sure what the V part is but dBm is basically to 0 dB is 
one milliwatts. So that has got a very high calculated output power. And of course, low noise, figure output, da 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 da. The less noise, the better. 5 volt operation, what doesn't run on 5 volt these days. ROS compliant, what isn't ROS compliant. And then you just get into big old details of all that good stuff. So yeah, this little ship is your gain control and amplifier. Whereas this will be the decoder. So yeah, quite an interesting change of circumstances. When the camera learns to focus on the circuit board. Won't you camera? And of course we have various, here's another stage, these can be anything from clock crystals to filters to even if stages. So yeah they have quite a versatile but here we have the main crystal. Look. Power that chip, load of passives because noise is the worst thing in these sorts of systems. You probably find that this will be analog because modem actually stands for